everybody this is movie dash cam tonight we are in bath beach brooklyn we're going to be talking about a small time thief who is doing his thing like he normally does robbing a house little did he know the house he was robbing was the daughter of anthony spiro the acting boss of the banana crime family and of course since we were in bath beach we're going to be talking about the bath avenue crew because they play a heavy part in this obviously it did not end well for the small time thief. So let's flip this around and get into it. Okay, we're starting off in Diker Heights. I'll show you guys a little bit of Christmas lights over here just because so no one get on my back and say I didn't do a Christmas video. This is my version of a Christmas video. So the first address that we're going to is 8798 19th Street. That is where the guy was murdered. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Mooney Dashcam. I post in there pretty much every single day. Any crime scene photos that can't go on the YouTube end up on the Instagram, so check that out. Don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I very much appreciate that. Get a lot of inspiration that way. Also, don't forget to hit the notification button so you guys can see exactly when I post a new video. Okay. Let's see, they're, they're doing some tours here of the lights. Let's turn down. We'll go. We'll go a couple farther. Who brings you Christmas lights and a murder? Come on. Not a lot of people. I, I would have to say almost nobody. So, Anthony Spiro was one of the most respected guys in the Mafia at the time, especially being the acting boss of the Bonanno crime family and a ruthless leader. So when one of his daughters, Jill Spiro, had her house robbed, it was a big deal in the whole neighborhood. They were on the lookout for this guy and they didn't know who it could have been, but they were keeping their eyes peeled for him. The guy stole expensive jewelry and a fancy fur coat. This, you can make me squeeze. I know you guys like when I squeeze, but I don't like to squeeze. And he's standing right there. And he gives me a look like I'm in the wrong please. At first, Jill went and made a police report at the 67th precinct, but then shortly after, she refused to talk to detectives, assuming her dad um, took over the investigation, so to say. So, the guy's name was Vincent Bickelman, who had no clue who he robbed. He was 25 years old, and he was caught trying to sell her stuff. Not only was he caught trying to sell her stuff, but it was in the very neighborhood that he robbed it from. In the neighborhood that Anthony Spiro runs, it couldn't have been a worse mistake on his part, but like I said, he didn't know what he was doing. He was running to his regular guys that he would sell his stolen stuff to, those guys ended up being affiliated with Spiro. The people that ended up catching him are the absolute last people you would ever want to catch you in this situation. It was the infamous Bath Avenue crew. Now, for those of you who don't know who the Bath Avenue crew is, which I'm sure many of you already do, I'll give you a brief uh, summary of who they are. They're younger guys from the neighborhood that would do anything to become a part of the Banano crime family. Really, any family, but that's kind of what they were gearing towards. And what a better way for them to do it than get on Anthony Spiro's good side by catching the guy who stole his daughter's stuff. The Bath Avenue crew consisted of five original members, Paul Galino, Jimmy Calandra, Joey Calco, Tommy Reynolds, and Fabrizio DeFrancisi. I might be pronouncing that wrong. And then later on, two more, Mikey Yamin and Anthony Gonzalez. Might be pronouncing that wrong too. Who the fuck knows? This is the infamous Bath Avenue. We're going down Bath Avenue. Now they were a super dangerous crew because they would do pretty much anything to get their respect and prove themselves that they were good members of the mafia or they would make good members of the mafia. They all were tattooed numbers one through seven on their ankles. The ankle's a weird spot to get a tattoo, but I won't comment on that. So when they caught Vincent Bickelman, 
they gave him a beating like he never felt before. And they took Jill's stuff. They brought it to a guy named Joe Bonanti, one of Spiro's captains, who then brought it to Spiro to see what Spiro wanted to do. Bonanti relayed the message back to the crew that Spiro wants him dead to make an example of him. Now, since Spiro was the guy to impress and Paul was pretty much the leader of the Bath Avenue crew, it was only natural that Paul Galino jumped on the opportunity to do this murder for him. Paul Galino did not waste any time. He catches Vincent Bickelman close to his apartment, which we're not too far away from. Now this is even crazier because his apartment was right around the corner from a police station. So you just have such close proximity to the last people that you want to see commit a murder. But he catches the guy Vincent and he shoots him six times dead right there. It says on the lawn. I read a few things that said on the lawn, but I don't think there were lawns. And there especially isn't a lawn now. Maybe back then. Who knows? I could be wrong. A lot of things have changed since 1991. So we are almost at this address now. The shooting took place September 15th, 1991. She was robbed in August. So like I said, he didn't waste any time jumping on this right away. We're going to turn on to 19th Avenue right here and we'll be right where this murder took place. Seven eighty-nine. Which is this building on the left? I'll hop out in the middle of the street. I won't even put on the hazards. So this is supposedly where it all went down. Say hello to the truck, of course. Don't forget it. Give it the respect it deserves. Now the Beth Avenue crew is an interesting one because. They were, like I said, young kids that hung around the neighborhood. Right there is the address. This building, the light just went on. Now it said he was killed near his apartment. So I don't know if this was his apartment, but this is where he was found. But like I said, they hung around the neighborhood. They hung around a spot called Nick's Candy Store. When they were like eight years old, the gangsters would give them money to wash their cars, look out for anything, kind of keep on watch. They were almost groomed to be gangsters since they were kids. Kind of a weird situation, but um, definitely a unique one. And then I even read that when they were 13, they were loaning money out on the street. They ended up getting involved in drugs. Um, one of them became hooked on crack. I wonder where exactly the body was. There was no crime scene photos to reference. Too windy, so let's hop in the truck to finish out the rest of the story. To be honest, I'm getting a little bored of these outfit checks. You guys want to know what I'm wearing or anything? I don't know. crazy they had one of their guys killed and another person claimed to have killed the guy meanwhile he didn't actually do it he was just saying for the reputation they chased after the guy and shot him on the street crazy situations they got themselves into but after this hit paul was pretty much on the fast track to being made until he went and screwed that up for himself and pretty much got himself killed not pretty much he did get himself killed that's a story for another video don't worry about that i will be covering that i'm sure some of you already know how that all went down. Fabrizio ended up being the only one to actually be made out of the whole Bath Avenue crew, and he was sentenced to life in 2001, so clearly it wasn't that good of a decision that they were all uh, working so hard to get. October 15th, 1999, 
Spiro ends up getting charged with conspiracy to commit murder and drug racketeering. And then April 16th, 2002, he gets life in prison for three murders and racketeering. So we already all knew this, but this life doesn't pay. He did end up going to jail when he was 70, so. Is that bad? If you're interested to know more info about the Bath Avenue crew, I do have a Bath Avenue video. It's pretty old. I don't know if all the information was that correct. I wasn't as good as researching back then as I am now. But if you get the general sense of what was going on back then, I'll link it in the description. And that is pretty much everything I have to tell you about this situation. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one.